Hey everybody, Fan139 here, and welcome to another Destiny 2 video. It's new dungeon time, so you know what that means. He did it again with another Soul of Flawless. Well, I've actually done it twice now. So today I'm going to go over my second run of the Soul of Flawless, and I'm also going to show off how I did it, if you want to also get yourself a nice little pirate ship emblem. I will have uh, my state of Destiny 2 video, as promised, coming in the next week or so. We'll talk more about the state of the game, especially the whole fiasco with the sandbox team making some more blunders. But again, uh, that is for another video. So for today's video, we're going to jump into the dungeon. So let's start by showcasing the opening encounter. Very straightforward here. All you got to do is kill the enemies here. Start with Fallen first and then work your way to the hive. Kill the hive, pick up the riches, go inside and dunk them. Once you collect enough, you can proceed into the first area of the dungeon. Inside, you'll just have to cross a short little jumping puzzle-ish thing. It's not really a jumping puzzle. It's more just a couple of tricky jumps. Uh, make sure to take out the hive, and then you'll move into the first of the trap areas. So in this dungeon, there are traps you have to solve. It actually behaves kind of similarly to one of my Halo 5 Sanctum maps, if you've played any of those. For the first room, open the door on the left. Be careful not to run in there. There's a pressure plate on the floor that will spike you and end your run very quickly. Flip the switch, then go back out. You'll head down the tunnel on the right side. Jump across. Do not flip the switch on that platform. That also kills you. Instead, you're going to go underneath the falling floors and pull the lever there. I'm going to be up here. Uh, do not pull that lever. Then head back to the first room, jump up to the top, jump to the far back right door. You can step on the pressure plate in there. It will open the roof up, jump through there. You'll enter a large room. Be careful when you're jumping up not to go to the side with the arrow pointing above it. There's a pressure plate right there. Follow the path to the end and then you'll get to the slight little puzzle-ish area where you have to flip switches and jump across the room. There are some thrall in here. Be careful of the pressure plates on the floor. Very straightforward section, not much to worry about here. Once you get through there, you'll enter another area that has two doors. Open the one on the right, and then you'll come to the large center room. There's some fallen here, as well as some hive. Just take them out one by one. Take your time. Don't rush through it. Remember, the goal of a solo flawless run is to stay alive. There is no time limit to these encounters. Go through all four sections, pick up the scorch cannon, and then head to the next area. To do so, you need to fire the Scorch Cannon into the deposit bin that is from Scourge of the Past. You have to charge it to two full charges to open the door. As you're heading up, there is an Indiana Jones section that will drop a barrel down and will kill you if you don't use one of the cubby holes or bait the barrel to fall down and then run out the door and hide on the left or right sides. Go into the next area, look to the ceiling to find the vent, and then proceed forward into the first boss encounter. Now, for this first boss encounter, I use the Well of Radiance here. Uh, my loadout is a Volpecula hand cannon with Ensemble and Headstone. Ensemble won't really do you any benefits here, but Headstone is the kind of big sleeper perk, per se. Uh, the ability to spawn stasis crystals, which can then freeze other targets, is very beneficial if you're not running stasis as your primary subclass. I use no composure here for my energy weapon. I have it set to Feeding Frenzy and Reservoir Burst. And then for heavy, I have 1k. So the flow of this boss fight is very simple. Use the cover to avoid the ogre's death ray. He will kill you very quickly if you are out in the open. And then kind of prioritize the following targets in order. You want to start with any thrall that are in your face. Then you want to take out the vandal and dregs. And then finally, the hive rooms on the left and right. 
for the rooms on the left and right, again, the charge on the door is two ticks to open the door. Once you go inside, take out the enemies, pick up the riches. Do note that when you get 10 riches, you automatically recharge your super and all your abilities. So this is a very beneficial tactic to use if you are in a jam. Do not be afraid to use your super here. You will get it back really quickly. Take the riches to the crystal in the middle, then repeat the process on the other side. Do note that typically when you head back to the middle, that's when the thrall will spawn. So you'll want to take care of those. Uh, as a warlock, I have Necrotic Grip on, which makes this very easy. Just punch one and then watch the poison spread through the entire crowd. Head into the second room. Uh, if you actually time this right with no composure, you open the door and you're on the right side. You can actually get a full charge burst off as the Acolytes and Knights are coming out and the chain reaction burst will actually kill all the enemies. This is a very helpful tactic to get your footing in here, especially on the left side because the Ogre can actually laze into the room and kill you very quickly. Collect the riches, head back to the middle, and then proceed with the damage. Uh, this will take probably three, maybe four cycles, depending on if the ogre decides to actually attack your Well of Radiance when you drop it down. Just make sure to wait for the ogre to actually do his little pulse thing to indicate the damage phase has started before you drop your well, otherwise you'll run out of well at the very unfortunate time. The damage phase lasts about 30 seconds, which is about the same time as your Well of Radiance, that's why you want to wait. And I'm just going to go ahead and let my run of this boss fight play here now so you can see how the entire thing is handled. My little stasis crystal. The really good button. No. 
Ask and you shall receive, apparently. this time. Once the ogre goes down, you will proceed into the next section, which is the sparrow section. I will tell you right now that this is probably going to be the part of the dungeon that trips up most people on their solo flawless runs. It is a very different change of pace from most experiences in the game, and you have to get used to it before you actually attempt a solo flawless run. That's why I actually recommend that before you actually go ahead and do a solo flawless run for the first time, that you actually try the sparrow section out with some friends to get a handle on what you need to do. Essentially, what you need to do is you need to sparrow to four mines in sequence, and you need to do this really quick. Now, along the way, there are some switches you can hit that will extend the mine timer. The thing, though, is that some of these switches are kind of bait in a way, and that they will put you in a very vulnerable position to get hit by a lot of ads or tanks. So what I like to do here, and I will show this on the screen at the same time, is for mines A and B, I don't even hit any of the fuses. I just go straight to the mines. I don't actually start hitting fuses until I get to mine C. And the fuses that I hit are one towards the middle, and then the one right at the very end as you're heading out of the hole. Also, as you're going from C to D, make sure that you hit the fuse on the right side. This will give you enough time to use the lift in the middle and not have to use the lift on the left. If you use the lift on the left, you will hit a fuse extension. However, it is very likely that your sparrow will start flipping and, you know, it'll eat up a lot of your time. Whereas if you only extend the one and you take the middle, it's a lot easier to recover on a solid footing and then proceed. I will showcase my run here to help you get a better handle on this now. Like this is going to be the showstopper for most people, is if you can't do this section quick enough. Uh, there are a lot of those little buttons. Um, a lot of them are in very, say, not beneficial spots. You, gotta have, you have to know which one to go for. Those first two alone.
Next up is the Fallen Shield Encounter. This is probably one of the easiest parts of the Solo Flawless run. All you need to do here is look around the room, find the Servitor, and that's the platform you need to go to. The only thing that can really threaten you here is the Vandals with the Scorch Cannons if you're not paying attention, or being overwhelmed by adds. Uh, for this encounter, I use Stasis, which means the adds overwhelm me will not really be an issue because all I do is just freeze them all. So just go from platform to platform, take out the adds, get 20 riches to fill the crystal, and then you can take out the servitor. Big uh, little tip here is to always kill the servitor in the same room as the riches because generally one of the exit doors will head straight to the cannon and that will make it a lot easier to line things up for you. Just grab the Scorch Cannon, line it up here. Uh, for a big pointer here, the charge bins only need to be shot. They don't actually need to be charged here. Charging it is a mechanic that you can use to let people get into position here. So just put a shot in the bin and then let it go. So you're gonna repeat this four times, make sure just look around the room to find the servitor. And it's just a very quick and easy out with this encounter. Once you're done with this, you're gonna head to the final boss encounter. Now, this is where you're going to spend probably the most of your time in this run. And it's not because it's hard. Actually, I will say that probably the hardest part of the Solo Flawless run, if we're talking about encounter threats, is the ogre fight. Uh, this encounter is actually very easy if you know what you're doing. So let me tell you what I do here. I use the same loadout as the ogre fight, so I'm running Well of Radiance. I have my Volpecula, Null Composure, and 1K. What you're going to do is you're going to main the left side of the room. So the left side of the room is going to be your friend particularly the far back platform where there are two cover sections. The reason I like to use this is you can bounce between the two cover sections if you were being overwhelmed by the web mines or if the drags start throwing a lot of grenades at you. The flow of this encounter is that every time you finish damage phase or the start of the fight, there will be two high priority targets. There will be a sniper shank and there will also be an invisible marauder you need to kill that sniper shank first. That is priority number one. Use heavy, use whatever you have to to take care of this target. There will be a Scorch Cannon Vandal that will come harass you at the start of the fight. What you can do is let him come up next to you just by weakening him. Eventually, once he gets weak enough, he'll actually charge you. Just kill him, but leave his Scorch Cannon on the ground. As long as you don't pick up the Scorch Cannon, another Vandal will not spawn until you touch the Scorch Cannon. So kill the shank. Take your time here. You can use your super because again, once you get 10 riches, you get your super back immediately. Kill the shank. Then you can use the scorch cannon to kill the marauder because once the sniper shank is eliminated, the captain boss will stop throwing web mines and the room becomes a bit easier to manage. Once you kill the marauder, he will drop 10 riches, which will immediately charge your abilities, dunk those into the bin, and then you just need to collect 50 more riches. It takes 60 to enter the DPS phase. What I like to do here is I like to just bounce between the left and the middle. Reason why is because with your abilities being recharged with each 10 riches, I can use my heal grenades to heal me as soon as I'm attacking a platform. And then I just use Necrotic Grip's poison spread to take care of all the dregs on the platform. So you're going to do that until you get enough riches. Then you're going to go bank them. Make sure to use your heal grenades, healing rifters, whatever you need to stay alive once you get to middle. Start the damage phase and then just lay into the boss with your fusions, your 1k. You're going to want to shoot for about 25 to 30% of his health each phase and then it'll take you three to four rotations. The nice thing about this fight is uh, his damage phase lasts exactly the length of the Well of Radiance, so you can um, put it down as soon as he goes in and you can know exactly what you got available. Very straightforward fight, just play your life, make sure to take care of the priority targets in the correct order. I cannot stress that enough, you have to kill that shank first, otherwise things will become very hairy. Biggest threat here is not paying attention and falling into the water, or just getting overwhelmed by the sniper shank and hitting the targets in the wrong order. Your worst timing will probably be right as you're exiting the damage phase, and again, the boss's damage phase lasts 30 seconds, so the exact length of your Well of Radiance once you put it down. So watch your Well Timer, and as that runs out, you know that that's your cue to bail. 
So generally I like to wait till about three to five seconds. And then once that three to five second warning comes up, I just bail early. So I'm already in a good position when those sniper and marauder enemies come out and I can start moving into the next phase immediately. Very straightforward dungeon. I'll let my final flight kind of play here a bit just on the last couple rotations because again, it does take a lot of time here. Very straightforward. Again, this probably fits on my second hardest behind Prophecy and eh, maybe even second easiest if I'm being honest. Um, but a very fun experience. Definitely give it a shot. Uh, you get an emblem if you manage to succeed. Plus you can tell all of your friends, hey, I managed to do a dungeon solo flawless. All in all, definitely a fun ploy. Again, I will have my update on State of Destiny 2 here next, probably within the next week or so. And I will catch you next time. Oh, he's coming on the right this time?
play Plink Plonk with this shank for another 10 minutes, so... Did he drop heavy too? He did. Everything's dropping heavy now. I had no choice there, I had to just fail on it because I was approaching death. Actually, I could tell himself I was approaching death because so I was going red. So I did deposit the riches. So I me drag.
Moon and another Bond. Man, this thing does not want to give me anything but Bonds. But, sir, I hear you sneaking around. Like, by the way. You, you're, you're here to take, to take what's mine. Don't you touch nothing. It's all mine. <laughs> I love that. It's like, it's all mine! <laughs> Alright, so just a little over an hour and a half, or about an hour and a half. Obviously, the last encounter is where I spent most of the time. Um, boss himself has about 4.2, 4.3 million health. So just keep that in mind with whatever damage generating weaponry you're going to use. Obviously, for this season, it's likely going to be a pair of fusions. 